Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. Welcome to City Line. Bostonians are often the focus of good natured humor for that distinct Boston accent. You know, park your car in the Harvard Yard. <laughs> You hear that? This is my Boston accent. This is my Boston accent. Yeah, it is. Shh. This is my Boston accent. Well, later in the program, an ad campaign that celebrates the diversity of accents across the city. But first, the Department of Justice is now appealing a Florida judge's ruling that overturned the CDC's mandatory mask mandate on public transportation. Mm -hmm. With state and city governments already dropping some local mask mandates, what will this mean for some communities? Joining me now is Federica Williams. She is the CEO of the Whittier Street Neighborhood Health Center on the front lines of delivering masks, COVID testing, vaccinations, and quality health care to one of Boston's most vulnerable communities. Um, Frederica, let me start by asking you, what is your view on the recent released uh, mask guidance in Boston and around the country? Thank you for having me. It is unfortunate that it is confusing, especially when we reflect on communities of color, such as ours, the black, indigenous people of color, who were negatively impacted by the virus. So it'd be very helpful for the CDC, and I know they'll be coming out with guidelines in, in a few weeks to come out with guidelines. What we are recommending to our patients and what I'm doing, I'm still wearing my mask indoors and in public transportation. The virus hasn't ended. The pandemic hasn't ended. It hasn't turned into the endemic that people think. We saw that the mortality and morbidity rates were high in our community. So we believe that prevention is better than cure. So mm -hmm. safety first, wear your mask. I know it's been a long two and a half years and I know the social isolation, but we are concerned that if we relax the mask guidelines and also get people to get vaccinated, mm -hmm. if we relax those guidelines, then we may end up again in another pandemic which has economic, social, mental health, uh, behavioral health impact. So I would say, hold on a little longer mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. we have firm guidelines, stay safe, get your vaccinations. I've actually gotten my second booster. I'm of that demographic I'm, that I'm, needs I'm, the second I'm booster. Nine, so uh, early next week. stay safe, wear the mask. So, you know, you make a good point. So this has not moved from um, uh, pandemic yet to endemic, no, although it's, it's quickly getting there. Um, so talk more about the kind of uh, support and things people in communities of color should really be thinking about in terms of the big picture. Yeah. So the big picture, first of all, um, we have a lot of patients with chronic conditions, um, and we saw that those were the people that were negatively impacted in communities of color. We also have people who have immunocompromised system. And even if you're in good health, I would say safety first, just as we encourage people to go to their primary care visit to do their annual checkup, stay with the CDC guidelines of masking, socially distancing, hand washing and vaccinations, of course, until we are to that point where we've reached full, um, you know, uh, endemic status. I still, we still see, as a matter of fact, the um, positivity rates are increasing. Mm -hmm. So if the mm -hmm. rates are going up in Boston, that is mm -hmm. a sign that definitely we're not out of the woods yet. Mm -hmm. And if we're not out of the woods yet, we need to stay vigilant and not relax. I know it's been very difficult, especially for um, isolation, for the anxiety of not um, being connected. We as a people love to interact, but we'll be able to do that for the rest of our lives. So mm -hmm. a few more months, I think, is well worth the investment. Well worth the investment mm -hmm. and the sacrifice. And uh, in fact, the rates going up across the city, but that probably means they're going up even higher they're going in up. communities of color. Yes, so we are, and, and another thing too is um, there are antiviral treatments for people that test positive. We open a clinic and we're seeing that for people of color, we don't have the education, the information is not out there. So our role is to educate people on A, follow the guidelines, mm -hmm. but also if you do test positive, 
go to the Department of Public Health has partnered with hospitals and health centers to provide the antiviral treatment. If you're vaccinated, we've seen that it prevents um, hospitalization, so you can get mm -hmm. um, instead of being in the hospital. But we saw so many people that passed away. We saw so 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 many people that were ill. So I would again say that. I would urge the CDC and the Department of Public Health to come up with firm guidelines because it's confusing. People are getting um, frustrated. It's also become so political, but mm -hmm. our job, I work for the community. Mm -hmm. I work for people of color. So we are encouraging them to follow the signs, get your information from your physician, go to your primary care provider, come to a community health center, Speak to people who know the information and can guide you mm -hmm. and don't listen to social media and all the other sources where people are getting the information. So many of the patients that you see at Whittier are under-resourced yes. when it comes to getting access to health care. So yeah. um, how and where should residents get the tools that they need to stay safe uh, through this next uh, period? We're talking about masks, vaccines, mm -hmm. uh, all, all of that. The Biden administration and also the DPH has um, provided free masks for um, community organizations such as Whittier Street Health Center. So come to us, we'll give you masks. Come to us, we'll give you supplies. Um, we'll provide a PCR testing for you. We're also giving out rapid testing kits. Mm -hmm. And again, the vaccination clinics are still open. We're encouraging people. It is unfortunate that because the information has been so confusing, there's still a number of people that are not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And so we cannot, we will not reach full immunity status if we're not all um, vaccinated or doing the things that we need to do to keep safe. What kind of support um, going forward to places like Whittier Street Health Center and the other community health care clinics need from the city, the state, and the federal government to continue serving your patient population? I will say that the Biden administration, Governor Baker, the city um, have been very supportive. We've been a place of um, investment and resource for our community. We were doing COVID testing. We continue to do mobile vaccinations across the city. We continue to education. Education is power. When you have the information and you have the right information, then you can take the right steps. Mm -hmm. So I think that continuing to build the infrastructure of organizations such as ours, so we can serve our community, so we can keep them healthy, so we can keep them informed. It's not just the virus we're seeing food insecurity, we're seeing mm -hmm. high rates of suicide ideation in children, we're seeing high rates of people who are relapsing for substance abuse. We're, we know the economic impacts, we understand mm -hmm. why people are eager to get forward and move forward because so many small businesses have um, struggled financially. But I don't believe that if we don't do all the right step and invest in building a stronger future, mm -hmm. we will mm -hmm. keep relapsing and get back to where we were two and a half years ago and none of us want to get there. And in fact, it has been a very long two and a half years. How do you reassure patients who come to the health center to, to have hope for the future that this someday will end? programs such as this. Um, and also we have our outreach uh, workers who reflect the community. So we are a clinic outside of the walls. We have two clinics on Tremont Street and Blue Hill Ave, but we also have a fleet of four mobile vans that go out to public housing, homeless shelters, um, to schools to meet with students who are seeing and educating uh, students and parents and um, giving them hope. There is a bright future ahead. Mm -hmm. Our children will be healthy. I know that the virtual schools and the iso for children, mm -hmm. isolation for seniors has had an impact. So we're doing things for our seniors. We have a group at Whittier called um, the 1290 group. It's a senior group for healthy aging and they're eager to get out. So we keep them safe. They come into the clinic, but they are fully masked. Mm -hmm. They're fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So if you've taken all the steps, there is a hope that uh, this will end and we will get to endemic. Hopefully um, it will become the flu, hopefully sooner. sooner, sooner but I would say later. that as a community that has been negatively impacted. We need to stay vigilant. Stay vigilant, stay focused and build the resiliency. Our community has been suffering 
long before the pandemic. The pandemic has just exacerbated the gaps that were there. Mm -hmm. The gaps have widened. Mm -hmm. And if we don't take the steps to focus on prevention, it will even it will widen even more. So okay. please keep those masks on on the MBTA and stay, and stay healthy. Stay right. safe. Frederica Williams from Whittier Street Health Center. Thank you for being here Thank today. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you. A game changing campaign designed to attract a broad range of visitors to Boston is in play. The woman behind the latest all inclusive ad that's attempting to show there is more than one Boston accent. That's next on CityLine.